Hello, I'm Joshua Carr. Today I'd like to talk to you about building an interest-only period into an amortization schedule. So in front of us we have a pretty typical amortization schedule. We're borrowing a certain amount of money, in this case $100,000. We have an interest rate, we have a number of periods, we have an interest-only period. It says how long the interest-only period will be. Uh, as you can see here, we have a beginning balance. We have a payment function, which shows the monthly payment. That is our monthly interest rate running for 300 months, uh, borrowing $100,000. We have an interest calculation that is simply equivalent to what's the end of period balance and multiplying that by the monthly interest rate. And then we have the principal, which is the difference between the payment and the interest. And then finally, we have the end of period balance, which is the difference of the beginning of period balance and the principal. So since this is running for 300 months, we should see that by month 300, we have fully paid it off. And we do in fact see that, that by month 300, we have fully paid it off. So it's good to double check the math to make sure this is working as expected. So how do we build this? It's pretty simple. Basically, we need to have a toggle that will set the payment to be the interest during the interest only period. And when not, it just goes back to the normal payment calculation. So I go to where it says PMT, and in front of it, I'm going to put in an if statement, because again, we're saying if it's interest only and there's an IO period, then set the payment equal to the interest. If not, calculate the payment as normal. So first off, I do if and, and I'm going to say if it's an interest only period, I'll put some dollar signs on there to fix the location, and the current month I'm in is less than or equal to when the IO period ends, and again, that's saying uh, if you're in the interest only period and the month you're in is less than or equal to when the interest only period ends, you'll notice that I had C13 float because when I copy this up and down, I want it to move. But I locked H7 and H8 with dollar signs. Uh, that was just me using F4 to throw some dollar signs on that thing. If I'm in the interest only period, then the payment should be equal to the interest in that equivalent month, basically F13. And if not, do the payment function as you were going to originally. Again, if we're in the IO period, the interest only period, the payment is equal to the interest. Otherwise, just calculate the payment as you would normally. If I do that and I press enter, nothing happens. Nothing happens because I have not turned the interest only period on. To turn it on, I throw in a one, and there it is. The payment is now equal to the interest only period. Let me drag that down a few months, say out to month 12, and what we should see is if it's interest only and it's running out to six months, you get six months of interest only payments and no principal. If it's three months, it's three. If I turn it off, it turns off. You'll notice that I like to turn interest only on and off by using ones and zeros. The other way to have done that would be to write the word true or write the word false. But then in the payment function, instead of putting in just H7, I'd have to put in H7 equals true. And that's just extra writing for really no reason. Uh, the other thing to point out is that if you were going to put in an interest only period, normally what you would then do is say, well, if I have an interest only period, then I should adjust the amortization to take into account that I did that. You know, a lot of lenders will say, well, if I'm lending you the money over 300 months and now there's a 12 month amortization period, then amortize over 288 months because you know you had a 12 month interest only period. In this case, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying if there's three months of IO, then start the amortization in month four. And so then it would not be fully paid off until say month 
304, right? Because you'd go an extra three months and then, or uh, sorry, until 303, because 300 plus three is 303. Uh, in any event, this is a basic way of building in an interest only period and it works, as you can see. I O on, I O off. Cool. Uh, if you're interested in more content like this, or if you have any suggestions for additional content, please contact me at josh at kahrrealestate.com. My email address is in the upper left-hand corner of the video. Or if you'd like to attend one of my live classes, I run them every six to eight weeks in New York City. If you can't attend in person, you can always attend it as a webinar. I also deliver classes on-site for corporations and universities throughout the world. You can read more about it on my website at carrealestate.com. Again, the web address is in the upper left-hand corner. Thanks again, and keep on building better models.